a few months now, and I've had a couple of you ask me to demonstrate how to draw anime eyes, which I just wanted to address for a moment, because anime eyes isn't really like a distinguishable thing. Yes, it's, I know what you mean. You mean eyes from like anime, duh. But you'll know what I'm talking about if you've ever been drawing something like big eyes, small mouth, and someone is like, oh, are you drawing Sailor Moon? This looks nothing like Sailor Moon. Each animation studio in Japan has kind of its own style. Think Studio Ghibli and Studio Trigger. Both very different styles, both still anime. Now, the styles can change frequently. So there is no one style that is a typical anime style. In fact, a lot of the eyes that you see me draw, as well as eyes from other Western media, such as like comics and video games, are probably influenced by anime and manga. And this is totally normal, totally normal. In fact, just as anime has influenced the Western media market, the Western media market has also influenced anime, which is why Disney played such an important role in the evolution of anime. That being said, yes, I will draw you an anime eye, but I was originally going to do this video as like a how to paint an iris video. So of course, what I'm going to do instead is how to paint an iris anime style versus a more realistic style. Okay, so as you can see in the top left corner of the screen, I actually took a photo of my eye and my iris, and I'm going to use that as a reference for the realistic eye, because an iris is a very complicated piece of your body. Like, if you look closely into there, you see that there's all these little tendrils and all these little threads that kind of reach into the pupil, and it is like a complex pattern, so it is something I wanted to use a reference for. So first things first, um, the left hand side is the realistic eye that I'm drawing and the right hand side is going to be the anime eye that I'm drawing. And as you can see right now, I'm just sketching it out, trying to get a sense of the form. However, it is important to mention that the left hand side is sped up, whereas the right hand side is more of the natural speed that I draw at, just because it took so much longer to draw the realistic eye than it did to draw the anime eye. So one thing to note is the iris of the realistic eye does not have a hard edge. The iris of the realistic eye actually has a feathered edge because if you look even at the reference photo in the top left, it's not a very sharp line that goes around my iris. It's actually kind of blurry and soft. And you'll find that if you look at your own eye in the mirror as well. However, the anime eye does have a sharp edge to the iris. And you will also notice that the anime eye uses an oval shape, whereas the realistic eye, it is more of a circular shape. This in particular is not a circle because it's not going to be a circle unless you're looking at it straight on. If it is slightly askew in perspective, it's going to be kind of more like a squished circle, like an oval. So it is still an oval. It's just not as dramatically ovaline as the anime eye is. And of course, if you're drawing an eye facing straight on, that will be a perfect circle. And the pupil is also going to be a perfect circle in the realistic eye, or more of a squish circle if it's in perspective. However, the pupil in the anime eye will reflect the shape of the iris unless you're going for a more artistic look. For example, at the end of this uh, video, this process video, I will actually change it to a star instead of a perfect oval. And that's totally normal in anime, that is expected. It's less common to see that type of thing um, in a realistic eye unless they are wearing contacts, but yes, play around with the anime eye as much as you like. Now what we're doing here is we are coloring the iris. Now what you've noticed is I've actually done a gradient, so it's darker on the upper part of the iris than it is on the lower part of the iris. And that's because the lower part of the iris tends to catch more light because the upper part of the iris is actually overshadowed not only by the upper lid, but also by the eyelashes because assumably your eye will have eyelashes attached to it. But what I'm doing here with the realistic eye is, you see how in the reference photo, I don't just have blue gray eyes. I also have kind of green and brown in there. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in those little details because that is what makes an iris unique. And no person has the same iris as another individual. Each iris is unique, kind of like a snowflake. And so that's just the details that I'm adding in there. 
And for the anime eye, I'm just kind of like shaping in the sclera because it is important to tell the difference between the whites of the eyes and the skin. And since I've put skin in the realistic eye, it's only fair that our anime character gets some skin as well. Now, with the macro photo of this iris, you can see the thready tendrils that reach towards the center of your pupil, and these are all part of the intricate mechanisms which form the aperture of your eye. But these are organic forms, so there are spaces in between them, and that's why we draw them as ripples. And they're kind of wibbly-wobbly, and sometimes they even have forms that look kind of like holes, like those brown spots. And as I mentioned, in the case of my eye, I have these brown spots and these green spots, which is actually heterochromia. So as you can see from the reference in the corner, I have blue-gray eyes with brown and greenish-yellow spots. And so I'm trying to replicate that as much as I can. And I go and I, uh, I use color dodge layers, I use overlay layers, I play with the opacity so it is kind of transparent. And that way it's all kind of delicate and layers together, like, like how you would layer in a painting. Because of course, we're painting this eye. Now when it comes to the anime eye, what I'm doing is I'm just putting in the, the whites and lights at the bottom, and then the shadows are sticking closer to the top. But the reflection in the anime eye is usually going to be like an oval or a circle or maybe like a wedge-shaped line or, or something like that. Reflections in anime eyes do not tend to get very complicated. They're very simple. And actually what I'm doing here is I'm doing a very simplistic anime eye first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more details to it to make it a bit more complex, a bit more interesting. And things that I'll do is I'll, I'll add a few more reflections, I'll add a few more eyelashes. But yeah, in general, anime eyes have to be simplistic because in an anime studio, they don't want to spend so much time on every single frame to get it looking right in the animation. Plus, the more details you have in a frame, the easier it is to mess up and the longer you'll have to work on the actual animation so that it flows smoothly. So that's why you have simplistic, broken down forms and shapes with any cartoon eye, including anime eyes. Now, going back to the realistic eye, you can see that I'm putting in those reflections finally, and they are very different than the reflections in the anime eye. So thank goodness I have a reference for this because drawing reflections in an eye can actually be quite daunting. I'm going for the windows that are being reflected in my eye, and I'm making them a bit bigger because as you can see, I'm stretching it over to the sclera or the whites of the eye as well, whereas in the reference, it is contained entirely in the shape of my iris. And that's just like an artistic choice. You don't have to follow a reference exactly. You can always just change things and kind of go down your own path if that's what suits you. And what I'm doing here is I'm going back and I'm adding in the little details that might have been lost from the beginning. So I put that dark shadow um, around the iris of the eye because I do have dark rings around my iris. And I'm also going in and I'm just kind of like experimenting with different color layers to kind of see what makes the reflections pop, what makes it a bit more realistic. Don't be afraid to experiment because no one knows exactly what it is that they're doing. It's, it's all kind of like a trial and error process. So don't feel like just because you're doing trial and error that you're lost. That is just part of the exploration process of finding out the actual answer to that particular painting that you're working on. And so I put in the reflections of the window and such, but you can see I'm also putting in these white highlights at the bottom of the eye. And the reason for that is because your eye is naturally a very moist surface. Yes, I know I said moist. It's a very um, unpleasant word. <laughs> but um, so gravity plays a part. So your eye is moist and the moisture does kind of pool a little bit at your lower lid line because gravity pulls it down. So obviously that's why tears fall down instead of tears falling up. I mean, how can you fall up? Anyway, ignore me for, for that bit. But yeah, so um, just adding these highlights, these little skinny little lines and dots will add a bit of dimension to your eye. You can also add it to your tear duct. You can even add it to a bit of the skin underneath the eye. Now, very coincidentally, I happen to be working on the eyebrow at the same time for both the anime eye and the realistic eye. But this is not an eyebrow tutorial, this is an iris tutorial, and so we will not talk about the eyebrow. We will talk about the iris. And things to note is light. 
light will affect your iris and your pupil. For example, in low light conditions, your pupil will appear larger, and in bright light conditions, your pupil will go like pinhead small. At this point, I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to add a few details here and there to kind of bring it to a finer finish. And I'll show you that right here. So if I remove all of those extra details in that realistic eye, this is a focus on the iris and this is what it looks like. And I even made it a bit more Renaissance looking and a bit more um, straight on so you can see what that would look like. And then of course on the right, I just had fun with it. Have fun with anime eyes because there's so much fun to be had. And that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're so inclined, please smash that subscribe button as well. You can find me on my socials. And you can find me here every week. Hata for now, guys. Have fun.